Welcome back to the Media Roundtable Special Edition, where we dive deep into the secrets of the craft of audio advertising and give points of view and, and perspective on really critical topics for the chief audio officer. That is the person who is responsible for the success of their audio campaign on behalf of a brand. I'm your host, Dan Granger, founder and CEO of Oxford Road. And today's a fun one, actually. We're taking you back to the Chief Audio Officer Summit. You heard recently the conversation that we had at our welcome reception under the umbrella theme of purpose about the importance of the work that we do in audio and how to really tie your personal and business values and purpose to the work that you're doing, whether that's the shows that you support or the way that you're treating your customers. All of this matters. And that's why we talked to Brittany Clevenger at BetterHelp and Ashley Flowers of Audio Chuck about how they're making a real world impact through the work that they do. So now we're going to go in what might feel like a different direction, but maybe is not because we're going to let you in on the session that followed that, which was a conversation called Permission to Laugh featuring hosts of Fly on the Wall podcast, Dana Carvey and David Spade. Now, Jenna Weiss Berman of Pineapple Street and Odyssey hosted this conversation, although she really didn't have a chance to say much because all you need to do is give those guys like a one word prompt and they'll go and go and go. And they are hilarious. If, you, if, you, if you're not a Gen Xer like me, these are two legends from SNL who have gone on to have very successful TV and film careers. But they came to talk to us about why, after having worked in TV and in movies and really stage everything you can think of, why would they go into podcasts? What is it about this platform that attracted them that they would spend their time on it? And I also think there's a case to be made for comedy. You know, sometimes you're solving a crime and sometimes you're helping people with their mental health, but sometimes you just need to cope with your reality. And that's where comedy can really come in and break down our defenses and put a smile on our face. And that has a value. So we're not going to get so cerebral in this one when it comes to tactics on audio campaigns. But hopefully, in hearing these guys, you'll see an example of how a podcast can make somebody feel because you're really going to enjoy it. And hopefully you'll consider them uh, as a potential avenue for sponsorship um, because comedy can be very good. It can be a very good place for uh, not just listeners, but also sponsorship. And so without any further preface, I want to introduce Jenna Weiss Berman, David Spade, and Dana Carvey from our Chief Audio Officer Summit Welcome Reception just a few weeks ago. The two gentlemen uh, that are about to be interviewed here, um, I, it's one of my favorite shows to listen to when I have a chance. Um, it, it's an easy listen and a lot of fun. I find myself smiling um, when I'm listening. Um, you know, and, and sometimes audio, we're talking about like the real world impact that audio can make, right? And sometimes the impact is you're solving cold cases, right? You're actually like solving murders. But sometimes there's so much change, we just need a little respite. We just need a little break. And we need our minds to focus on something else. And, and I think that comedy um, is a little bit underrepresented in terms of um, how much of the benefit of the doubt that it gets in its value to brands. You know, comedians really built this business. Quick anecdote, and we'll get moving here, but um, probably 12 years ago, uh, Gary Brown and I were at a Starbucks in San Francisco, and John Lovitz was in there, standing there holding a dog. And you know, the thing I would always do during that period of time, because in an early industry, anytime I'd see a comedian anywhere, I'd be like, you got a podcast? And uh, they'd be like, what's a podcast? And I'd tell them, because I wanted to be a champion for the industry. Well, he's like, uh, uh, "What? tell me what you mean about a podcast. Well, what I didn't, he's like, well, let's meet in LA. So he gives us an address to go meet. I didn't realize he had the John Lovitz podcast comedy theater in Universal City. And so we got some people to sponsor it. And one of the, uh, one of the shows that they did had Dana Carvey 
on it. And he came up stage, and one of the things that came up was attribution and how brands actually measure all the promo codes and vanity URLs and everything like that. He did a 10-minute roast of how dumb it is that we use all of these vanity URLs. It's probably the funniest thing I've ever seen pertinent to our industry. So anyway, look, we've got some really special titans here among us tonight. Um, you really, you, you don't even need the full resume, but I want, I want to um, also say Jenna Weiss Berman, our friend at Pineapple Street, co-founder of Pineapple Street, is here to have a conversation with the, the co-hosts of Superfly and Fly on the Wall, Dana Carvey and David Spade. Come on up. I guess so. We can switch halfway, man. You gonna stand? You want to stand? All right. Yeah. Uh, maybe I might. You're going to do your Joe Biden I walk? I don't know. You're going to walk like yeah, Joe Biden? Yeah, let's see. They let's said it would be intimate, and they weren't lying. <laughs> I feel like I'm in my what? living room. I got dry humped on the way in. It's very intimate here. <laughs> hey, products. <laughs> hey, brands. Hey, brands. How many are from a brand that advertises on Fly on the Wall? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Not one. Yeah. Oh my God. Bullshit. That's right. We got one. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. I think I love you. Betterment. Which one are you? Oh, I remember that. Uh, okay. Betterment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll talk later. Dot com. I know it. <laughs> Great company. I think we do a, a thirty-second ad for them for nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk later, and you always—it's a, it's a whole. See, we go long. That's it. That's our. That's, that's our motto. Our brand is we go too let's, long. Let's go introduce ahead. Jenna. Yeah. She's uh, <laughs> yeah, the moderator, <laughs> and we're going to talk over you right. like we talk over no, each other so on the great. podcast. I love this. We we're good at talking over. We can do one more question, then we got to get out of here. Uh, go ahead, Jenna. A quick, quick impression of Joe Biden walking. <laughs> Sorry. I had it's to do it because I got to get up. No, come on. The fact of the matter is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Jenna. <laughs> All right. How are you? Do you have good, a question? How are you doing? <laughs> I would love to ask a question. It's good to see this everyone. This is a leg fest. I don't know. It's not sort of <laughs> used to a table. So. I know. I'm, it's a little. It's fine. Um, very good to see everyone. So glad you came tonight. Uh, I'm Jenna from Odyssey and Pineapple Street. Um, and I uh, work with these guys on this great show, Fly on the Wall. And I'm going to ask them a few questions about it. Um, first of all, I always wonder this. You guys have had, obviously, big, wonderful careers in TV, film, lots of things. Why do you want to start a podcast? Why a podcast? Well, you know, uh, you just kind of go with what's going on in the world, and we, we have downtime between movies. We have downtime between TV shows and stand-up, and Dana and I are great friends that sort of reconnected after SNL. It's not faked. People go, oh, yeah. we're really friends. No, we, you know, he <laughs> oh, was you guys are faking one it. of my favorite guys doing stand-up, and then I got an SNL with him, and it was great to work with him there, and one of the best ever on there. And then we wound up, he was in town a lot, and I was in town, and we started hanging out more, and John Lovitz, and we would always wind up talking about SNL, and uh, we just, we just, and then podcasts came up, and I was like, I'd love to do one sometime, because it's fun to talk about this stuff, and we're supposed to be amusing, but... Uh, I would rather do team up with someone because it's it's just power. It's like a movie. You do two of us, it's for the price of one. And Dana just seemed like a good guy. And we talked to our manager. We have the same manager. And we all talked about it. And we thought this might be mm -hmm. a fun way to go with a slight SNL slant. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it just sounded like a, a, a good good thing to do and a good guy to do it with and a good place to do it. Well, it's a technological miracle. Yeah. The digital audience is potentially five billion people. Yeah. You can do it from your bedroom. You know, because <laughs> at, at Saturday Night Live or, you know, comedians backstage, all, it was all the best stuff in the car rides and things like that. And now this thing exists where, I mean, remember Jerry said, I guess we got to the point where they just like to hear us talk. Yeah. <laughs> You're seeing behind the curtain. And so we're making it up and improvising. Kevin Nealon and I would do Hans and Franz. You know, the <laughs> applause. We would, we would just <laughs> improvise for hours in our office on like yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah, let me tell you something. You know, you'd better not undo your belt. You might cause a flavalanche. You know, 
And then we had to hone it down and get ready for the cameras, and that was fine. But to be able to do behind the scenes improvised interviews and riffing and get paid for it and reach a huge audience is just, yeah. you know, Johnny Carson, I'm not, I won't do the impression, he would have had a podcast after he left his show. Sure. Are you sure you don't want to do an impression of Johnny Carson doing a podcast? So, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. Uh, welcome to Johnny's Night. And um, I'm, uh, I'm a little off tonight. I had two slippery monkeys at the hook and crook. <laughs> also, we said, maybe we should get into this. It's a niche business with three million podcasts. So it feels like there's room. Conan came in at 800,000, he told us. Oh, he did? We yeah. came in at 1.8, and now it's... So it's everyone's... Like, yeah, something like 3 million, but... I met a guy I'm, last week who didn't have a podcast. We did it before it was <laughs> mandatory. I got, yeah. a, I got a selfie with him. I couldn't believe it. It's a rare breed. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so for people who haven't listened to the show, tell them a little bit about it. And now we have Fly on the Wall, yeah. and then we also have Superfly, yes. which was launched this year. So maybe you can talk about both of them. Fly on the Wall was sort of our SNL-ish theme, just basically comedy. Uh, we know a lot of people from Saturday Night Live. We know a lot about it. And so we had hosts, writers... Uh, performers, obviously, and uh, musicians. And then it, it's on audio, and we thought it'd be fun to, you know, because we're two clowns, so we thought we could do a little more in video, because I see a lot of my friends on Instagram on theirs. So we did another one called Superfly. It's so, sort of current events, sort of screwing around and riffing, and uh, just me and Dana. We can have people on if we want. So we started that, and that's been a blast. And so now more people see that also, and then the Fly on the Wall is already well known, and so it's just a good combo. It's it's a little more work, but it's a lot of fun, and we do take it seriously. We, I mean, everyone jokes that podcasts are so easy, but they're actually really not. It's if you want it to be good, you have to you know investigate the guests. Even if we know Seinfeld, if we know these guys, you got to be ready to talk and go in different directions with them for an hour or whatever. And then on the Superfly, we're on camera and we research things to talk about and riff with and we just want stuff to be funny and uh, I'm sorry I thought you were handicapped he's, he's like this thought it was an old guy he was late he's like who are these two um, so that is a nice rig yeah <laughs> I thought somebody yeah. should help this guy alright um, I don't know we're doing a fucking dolly shot uh, Jesus uh, Christ I haven't seen choreography like that since the Lee Harvey Oswald prison <laughs> transfer <laughs> sorry that was Dennis Miller yeah no fly on the wall was uh, SNL themed <laughs> let's let that joke out yeah, I know sorry about that <laughs> no, stricken from the let's record let it, let's let it breathe <laughs> we'll take it out in post it's fine <laughs> It was like it was some kind of wheelchair or handicap. I didn't know. He was in, I thought he had like a cane. I'm like, go, oh, dude, I'm in the middle of something. Well, it looks like he's driving a car and playing a video game at the same time. He's like, this is airing live overseas. We're going straight to Madagascar. Pay-per-view. <laughs> anyway, this... Uh, what was the question? I don't know. <laughs> asking she was like, is your show any good? <laughs> This is the show. This is the show. Yeah, right. This is the show. It's yeah. unstructured. <laughs> um, for this crowd, why should advertisers buy uh, ads on podcasts that are comedy podcasts? Hmm. Shit. Deep. Deep. This is <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like just the obvious reason of people seem to get more involved in listening to a comedy and paying attention to the throwaway jokes, impressions, whatever we talk about. And sometimes... The other, uh, a straight, um, um, more serious podcast can be a little bit of white noise sometimes. And not to say it's bad, it's just sort of, it could be just uh, one level. Uh, and, and we're kind of goofing around and doing stuff. And then when we read an ad, sometimes we read them verbatim, and sometimes we goof around. And we goof around, it seems to bring it a little COVID. Um, it seems to bring... <laughs> It's I have weaker. Don't worry this about it. I have mutation is um, weaker. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we try to bring a little life to it. I was shedding virus funny. yesterday, but I've stopped. And I love that expression. <laughs> Sorry, David. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm in the last day of being contagious. I'm, it's not a problem for me. <laughs> so, you know, you, we, we read it. We try to have fun. We try to get some laughs from it. We make it usually, obviously, a little longer. Uh, but some places like that, some would rather it be verbatim. 
but if they have highlighted stuff, we make sure we get that out, and then we kind of run with it. So it's just whatever the preference is. But I think with comedy, people say, even in our comments, I, I actually listen for the commercials because we're going to make something out of it. We'll, we'll put something into it. We, at least we don't totally walk through it. I never wanted to phone it in. I just thought, I, you know, maybe it's my age group or something. A lot of these were companies, up and coming companies, family companies, startups, people with a dream, and they're advertising on our podcast. So I and David, we just took on the stance of being on the side of our sponsors, embracing them and their dreams. And, uh, just wanted to make the ads great. Wanted to make our ad reads the best and the funnest, and that's that was our attitude. I didn't. I said that backstage. I'm not making it up. This is the way we approach it, and we'll still approach it if no one here buys ad space on our. Right. <laughs> it, where it's a zero. It's not, <laughs> it's not like an annoying thing. It's more like this is the only reason we're on. So we have to give it the respect of like we there can't are partners. buzz through these. Yeah. They're, they're not kidding when they say they do like an eight minute ad read yeah. for a 30 second I like ad. to make them fun and part of it is like when we were doing Fly on the Wall we're doing interviews long form interviews and finally with the ads we were emancipated and we were able to like riff with each other and make each other laugh and I have a running thing where I always try to come up with a, uh, a slogan at the end of yeah. everyone you know master class is this isn't it time you're first class or so, it doesn't matter what it was no. but I, 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 what? You guys too? I thought you were a betterment. You're doing it all. What's going on? Master class. Okay, I do, I do love master class. Yeah. I have it. I've used it before you were our sponsor. Yeah. He said that backstage, actually. I'm not yeah. kidding. He was saying No, it's a great, class. it's a great thing because I did, I was, I went to state school. Spade went to Harvard, but we, um, no, we're not really well educated, but master class. I'm so dumb. Is done so so well with these bite-sized videos and so clean and clear. So that was an easy one, uh, but I love all of our sponsors. Betterment. I had a Better Health, Better Mints. Yeah, I think Better Help is here. We'll talk later.com. I know, you got two plugs no. now. <laughs> it's good. All right. Um, let's talk, can we talk about how you guys met and the, the early days on SNL? Sure, I, I was, uh, Living in Dana's, this sounds like a lie, but I rented Kevin Nealon's room in a house, right, Dana? You were above I the I live garage. in a house in the Hollywood Hills with Kevin Nealon and a couple of other people. I met David. Um, he was really young. He looked like a fetus with shoes. <laughs> um, and he was very young. And met him before I got on SNL. And then I was able to help Kevin get on it. And so we both got on SNL from this little home in the Hollywood Hills. And then David came aboard like four years later, yeah. five years later. I rented Kevin's room while he was out. And I got to meet Dana and I got to see Kevin. And Kevin's a hilarious comedian, great writer. So I would just watch these guys and go, holy shit, I know these guys on SNL. Which wasn't really my goal because I was just trying to struggle to do some stand-up. And then eventually got on as a writer, a performer, and then got to work with Dana for a while and Kevin. And then we, uh, you know, we had a whole slew of a really fun bunch there for a while and then uh we all went our separate ways but pretty much stayed friends with everybody um it was a you know a dream that i would kind of not want to even dare to have that dream i actually got a weird funny sitcom in 1981 starring nathan lane who wasn't nathan lane yet and myself and mickey rooney and we were, we it ended up going to New York and I was in Rockefeller Center shooting this sitcom and on the sixth floor and on the eighth floor was 8H, SNL. So I used to go up there on Thursdays and watch Joe Piscopo and Eddie Murphy and others rehearse and just thinking, God, I'd love to be on the eighth floor <laughs> rather than the sixth floor. <laughs> and then I got on the eighth floor. So it was quite a dream come true. And so then you really thought I could be on the 10th floor. <laughs> And you go, I guess it's not the higher Well, we floor. had the 17th floor for offices and writing and the 8th floor. And I asked Lauren, why can't we get the floors in between and just connect it all? Um, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> so now we have, you know, six. And anyway, that, it was a dream. You guys are pursuing your dreams, aren't you? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a question? 
Do you have a question? We're recording. We're actually recording this as a special. You're on yeah. flying the wall right now. This is our Netflix <laughs> special. And video. Yeah. This is a super fly episode. <laughs> we use fly in every single brand we have. Maybe I don't know why two. we called the second Look one. Look at super these two fly. are taking off. <laughs> have you had enough? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah. Are the doors locked? Can we get out? <laughs> I thought it'd be over by now. Sorry. Uh, Super Jenna. Fl- Superfly sound like a fun name, like a big version of Fly on the Wall. Yeah. yeah. And it's an old, cool 70s saying. And the great thing about Superfly is it's done on video, and then we can have clips made, because that's a great way to promote things. Yeah. <laughs> These one-minute shorts that just travel everywhere. So that's been very good for us. And, and a lot of fun to do. And again, the same idea, this... W- this new art form of 60 second or less sketches, basically, for me. I'm able to do a lot of political humor in bite-sized chunks and just throw it out all over the U- YouTube and social media. So that's really cool. I love that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of political humor, is there... Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do Biden much longer. I mean, <laughs> uh, I worked on him for two years. It was such a challenge to try to figure he's out... He's got COVID. <laughs> it might as well be typhoid. You're like, everyone's like, oh my God, he's got COVID. <laughs> this COVID thing. Do you have a favorite uh, politician these days you like to... <laughs> what? A favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not a favorite politician, a favorite person to impersonate. Um... It's really who I'm currently working on. Um, uh, I, was, I was just trying to get Elon Musk the other day. <laughs> uh, I was studying Donald Trump. Um, I found Al Franken asked me to do an event with him online, and we're old friends. And so he said, can you do Joe Biden? So then I, I thought, oh, wow, there's nothing there. And then I listened to his t- – well, not, not in an impression. No, no, I didn't know that was a – that's a pun. I, but it was like, what do I do? Because first it was like, my dad lost his job. No joke. You know, the Scranton thing. <laughs> number one, the one part. Number two, what the guy said. Number three, you know the drill. Come on. So that's all I had. But then it evolved. And the, the, the short that I did that really lit up everyone a little bit was like Biden going, there's no crisis at the border. And this is, and the reporter goes, how do you know? He goes, because it says so on the piece of paper. <laughs> and then how everyone was into the yeah. border after that. And then Biden came, I'll close the border harder than anyone's ever closed the border. <laughs> reporter goes, but you said, get your facts straight, Jack. I'll take out and beat the hell out of you. Dog face, a pony soldier. I'll close the border. Close the things faster and faster. Close the border. Can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's all I got. So it was a challenge to, for me, like George Bush Sr. going, not going to do it, became not bad, that, you know. <laughs> so to take Biden and make a character out of him, make it essentially a political that's funny, it, and now I might lose my impression. I, I don't know. I mean, unless I don't have a Kamala. <laughs> David? I don't have one. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we should go there. Actually, I just feed I just feed Dana, and then he does those, and it <laughs> works out great. It's been it's been really fun. The clips are fun. Uh, we sort of get a little uh, flack sometimes for them, but it's that's the idea, you know. You got to get out there and shake the tree a little bit yeah. with different things. But we talk about mostly just innocuous, dopey. I think the last the clip we're on now is the movie The Quiet Place review. So it really could be anything. So yeah, we go just put out the there. Place. The ones that are like more, if they're even a teensy bit political, they get more attention because everyone's kind of looking for trouble. That's all. Yeah. I do both. I did a Trump one that oh, yeah, during the Trump. lawsuit where he had to pay E.J. Carroll like 455 that he had a, um, a yard sale yeah. at Merrill Lawn. <laughs> And he was selling his tanning bed, remember that? Uh, it's for sale, it's a beautiful tanning bed, let me tell you. <laughs> It'll tan you with the goggles are free. We'll throw it in the goggles for free. <laughs> and then Spay goes, how much is it? And he goes, it's $455 million. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to keep a balance between different political factions. Make fun of both. Keep yeah, them yeah. guessing. <laughs> yep. But uh, it's a it's a sense it's a it's a strange time in the world. <laughs> it's a really strange. News time. flash. It's a really great <laughs> show. Amen. <laughs> it's a great show to have during a very strange time. I would yeah. say, yeah, I think that we want to really 
make ourselves laugh, you know, and yeah. have fun, and hopefully that translates. But when I get on the Zoom or when we're doing it in David's studio, and I see him, and he starts throwing stuff at me, it just yeah. wakes up my brain. It's really, really fun to go back and forth with each other. Just we enjoyed it, enjoyed it all the time. We did one yesterday, right? Yeah, we did one yesterday. Dennis Quaid. Don't Dennis be Quaid. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> jealous? <laughs> Whoa, well, look who had a movie star guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was very interesting. That was a fun, fun podcast. He brought his soul effects, and he worked out during the... guy the is very fit. Yeah, he's ripped. <laughs> yeah. He, he really did? No. No, but, but <laughs> He did do crunches between commercials. Uh, no, he's ripped. I don't know how he's that ripped, and he's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be 70s. Super stud, though. We had a great time with him. Got Luke Wilson this week. We got. Then we do an episode of Superfly. We're going to try to get Owen Wilson. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey. Luke Wilson and Owen Wilson. I had dinner with them and Kevin Nealon right as the pandemic was starting. And so we were like, let's. well, we should get together another time. You know? <laughs> that was it. COVID. You know? <laughs> Was it? Luke was looking forward to that. Love the Wilson brothers. Yeah, they're yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I, we're gonna wrap up soon. I yeah. know this has been all the over the final place. Final question. <laughs> Let's see. David Spade, Dana Garnflow, <laughs> and flies. <laughs> a freak, a geek, and a. I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> your, I told your manager that yeah. my. Yeah all-time favorite movie is Tommy Boy, okay. which I'm yeah. sure, I mean, there's no better movie. I showed it to my I like six-year-old. I remember. <laughs> a perfect movie. Yeah. I mean, it is a perfect it's a movie. beautiful Showed movie. it to my six-year-old recently, totally not appropriate for a six-year-old. Yeah. Um, he was confused, but he did laugh a lot. Uh, and um, Mark, your manager, was saying that uh, he said to ask you um, to tell a story about Farley and a tuna sandwich. Well... <laughs> that well, one here we go <laughs> was well, that was more of an argument we had, uh, and I like that your six year old was like fat guy fell down. It's still a funny movie, it's really uh, funny. even if you're six. Uh, but there's a, there's actually something in the movie that we took from the office, which was when I'd come in. We shared an office, so it was very tiny, a little wood desk. He sat behind me. And he actually had to walk through us to get to Chris Rock and Sandler's office. So we'd all be jammed in there all the time, just riffing around, trying to think of stuff. And Farley didn't really write uh, or read, so he would, uh, <laughs> he would be bored all day. And I was trying to scrape to get on the show, because everyone would just hand him stuff, because he's so funny. And he'd sit behind me and go, David, you want to go to lunch? I go, no, I'm writing. I got to do this shit. And then he's like, David, turn around. And he's so bored, I go, dude, if... If this is Fat Guy in Little Coat, I don't want to see it again. It's not funny anymore. You're going to have my coat on. It's not going to be funny. And he goes, it's not. It's something different, I promise. And then I turn around and he goes, Fat Guy in Little Coat, don't you quit on it. <laughs> and then when we were doing the movie, there's just scenes that are boring. The movie's really essentially about selling brake pads. So it's just not really even a funny subject. So each scene we'd be like, could this be funny? Let's say housekeeping. Let's say. So we said... Let's try Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Just for some reason in the middle of the scene. And then he did it, and it made it uh, into the movie. And then it, was, it wasn't like a high-testing joke. And then years later, you go, oh, that one was funny. you know. But that's how it always works. But he was obviously one of the greatest ever to do anything. I love Chris. Dana loves him. Yeah. Yeah, Dana. But, it, you know, jokes that have no real joke to it, like Fat Guy in a Little Coat, yeah. and the joy with what Chris did it, how happy he was, it's one of those, it, it just lasts. It never you know, ends because the, there is no real The joke. funny thing it's is, you know, it's like a blue Literally. blazer I have, you know, and so they have to <laughs> score the back lingo. So they have to cut it in the back and then lightly sew it together so it looks like it's real and then he rips it. And the first one he goes, David. Ah. And it's supposed to rip and he goes, Har! and he gets so frustrated. He goes, what the fuck? <laughs> And then they run in, they cut him. He goes, it's too tight. You got to cut it more. <laughs> cut me loose. <laughs> yeah, he's cut me loose. And we're all laughing. And then he's humiliated and getting more mad. And then the next one, he ripped his shreds. And then, uh, but it was fun. We were tense. Um, it was a long shoot. Now, what a blast Tommy Boy was and Black Sheep. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. And my manager handled Farley also. That's probably why he remembered that. Nice. Um, all right. Well, 
thank you all yeah, again that's very it. much for coming i want to let you know uh you should buy ads on this show. oh yeah if you can it's buy ads one. if you want get a crowbar yeah. in that wallet let's go <laughs> no pressure we'll but read it and if it's no good you can get out but we'll <laughs> we'll try one and more bang for your dollar <laughs> Longer, <laughs> funnier. Dana does impressions in most of the ads. You want a sticky ad, right? <laughs> Check your metrics. Uh-oh, it's going up. Use Farewell code word. Conan. So long, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, smart list. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> 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 okay, that's mine. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, these guys are gonna hang out with everyone here for a bit, so come say hi. Well, I hope you enjoyed that half as much as I did. Uh, those guys are fantastic. And look, none of this would be possible if it weren't for our sponsors of the event. And I just want to call out Odyssey and Pineapple Street Media uh, for uh, lending Dana and David and Jenna to come participate in this conversation and uh, that we could have permission to share it with all of you. Thank you for joining us. And this podcast is brought to you by Oxford road, where we want you to succeed in audio and use your influence for good. As members of the marketing community, we have the power to advance voices that don't just entertain, but edify and to build bridges across differences. So we can have open-minded, fair-minded discussions about the most important topics of our age. If you're a marketer and you're looking to align your brand values with extraordinary business outcomes, reach out to our agency, Oxford Road, by going to oxfordroad.com and subscribe to our weekly newsletter, The Influencer. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any feedback, hit us up, info at mediaroundtable.com. Good news, bad news, uh, constructive criticism, uh, we're interested in what you have to say to make this uh, a more valuable podcast uh, for your routine. Don't forget to check out Ad Infinitum. Uh, that is Oxford Road's audio creative focused podcast hosted by Stu Redwine, VP of Creative Services. Start at episode one and you will learn a lot about how to make your message uh, yield uh, the best results possible in the market um, based on some of the, the folks that you, we've had on there. Thank you to our guest speakers, um, as well as Bianca, Kyle, Haley, Ezra, Mary Jane, Everett, Neil, and the team at Podcast One. And as always, influence responsibly. <laughs>